Hello, I'm Dare Tevers. Welcome to a Let's Build in Minecraft Feed the Beast Monster. Now this will appear pretty randomly and it shouldn't take us too long, but in this first episode, it's going to be light on the building. We need a place to build and to talk about what we're building. I'm looking for a forested area that has a few hills for this build. The build will not be an easy one to film, but it's something I've wanted to try for quite a while. What are we building? Well, during the height of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were faced off and ready for nuclear Armageddon. Able to launch from its underground silo in just 58 seconds, the Titan II missile was capable of delivering a 9 megaton nuclear warhead to targets more than 6,300 miles or 10,000 kilometers away in about 30 minutes. The Titan II was deployed in a 1x9 configuration. Each Titan II silo was directly connected to an underground launch control capsule manned by a missile combat crew with two officers and two airmen. On the surface, the Titan II launch facilities covered an area of approximately 600 feet by 600 feet. All of the launch facilities were underground. The silo was built of heavily reinforced concrete. It was 147 feet deep and 55 feet in diameter. Inside the silo, there were nine levels of equipment rooms and access space for the missile. The silo was covered with a steel and concrete door that weighed 740 tons and could be opened in 17 to 20 seconds. The silo was connected to the missile control center by a 250 foot long access tunnel. Between the silo and the launch control center was a blast lock, a single level, heavily reinforced concrete structure containing three rooms. To enter the launch facility, the missile crews descended through a 35-foot deep access portal that opened into the blast lock area. Each end of the blast lock was covered by a pair of large steel blast doors, each weighing 6,000 pounds, designed to protect the launch center from either a surface nuclear blast or the explosion of the missile within the silo. These doors were designed to withstand an overpressure of 1,000 psi. The launch control center was a dome-shaped, reinforced concrete structure, 37 feet in diameter and containing three levels. The three floors within the launch center were suspended from the ceiling to minimize blast shock. These shock mounts were designed to permit a static floor load of 100 psi. The control center provided space for all of the launch control and communications equipment, as well as a mess area and sleeping quarters for the four-person combat crew. Of course, Making this in Minecraft is going to be a challenge. There are two approaches. We can hollow out an area and work completely underground, or we can cut open the terrain and build this from the bottom up. In addition, the Titan II complex did not have the control center on a straight line from the silo, but a 45 degree angle appeared to be the norm from what I've found. Now that just isn't workable in Minecraft, so we're gonna cheat a bit and put it in a straight line. For ease of filming this work, I decided to cut open a large area and then backfill any part I didn't need when I'm done. Thankfully, we have a quarry for just this kind of thing. We need an area less than that of the missile complex itself. Much of the complex was surface level support and the actual underground area is relatively small. We're going to need an area of about 360 feet long and 60 feet wide. Because a Minecraft block is generally accepted to be one meter square, our hole will need to be 110 blocks long and 18 blocks wide. I'm gonna cheat a bit and make it 120 blocks by 20 blocks to allow me room to deal with the way we build in Minecraft. We also need to go down about 45 blocks. We're gonna be going down 50 blocks, again, for extra room so that I can mess something up. How do we control a quarry so it only goes down this far? A quarry uses up to 32 MJ per tick to move the head and a flat 60 MJ to break a block. At maximum speed, the quarry moves at about 0.26 meters per tick. Therefore, the average power usage for the head to break a block is about 15 MJ per tick, giving us a total of about 48 MJ per tick for movement and breakage of any individual block. We need to quarry out about 120,000 blocks, but we may hit a void, so we're going to aim for only quarrying out 100,000 blocks. This will take us about 
384,615 ticks. This means we need approximately 18,461,538 MJ. Now, when I started doing calculations for this, I found a redstone energy cell holds 600,000 MJ, so I said, well, we drop down 30 of them and we get going. And I made two miscalculations. One, the quick amongst you will notice that my quarry is too big. That's one miscalculation. The other miscalculation is not reading up on monster and the changes in redstone energy cells. So I had to make do and make a best guess because in Monster, they no longer store MJ, they store RF, which is a 10 to one conversion to MJ. So what I really need is something like 1.8 billion RF to produce the 18 million MJ. A lot of numbers but I wanted to go through how I came to doing what I'm doing. Now I do, after filming, I realized that my quarry was wrong and I went back and fixed it. Uh, it, does, it does mean because we're doing 120 blocks by 20 blocks, I have to drop two quarries. So we'll be dropping two quarries and we do have a large mountain we do have to remove, but we will do that next time and hopefully we'll start building up next time as we try to build the Titan II missile complex here in Minecraft. Until then, I've been Derek Tebbers. Bye.